People, I want to tell you something. Since I started this struggle to obtain the right to take care of myself the way that I need to take care of myself, I have... I've had to do things that I would never willingly do. I've had to air things publicly that I did not want to air. Things that I've had to do to obtain the right to take care of myself. There's a lot of people hurt. My family has practically abandoned me now. My friends, they're all still my friends, but they're staying away because, well, let's just face it, I've put myself in the spotlight. Someone once told me, I think it was my second or third grade teacher told me change doesn't happen by itself someone has to make it happen and that process isn't always fun it isn't always easy and it's very rarely very rarely something that you can do to to attain peace and friends and whatever else I just want to say that I think I'm going to make this my second to last entry to the uh, my battles for the use of medical marijuana series the reason I'm doing that is because what it finally came down to for me to obtain the right to take care of myself was I had to fire my doctor, expose to the world the truth about the drugs that my doctor was giving me and your doctor's giving you and everything else. I've had to expose the lies that my friends and family have been living by and under for years and years and years claiming to be better than me in some way I didn't want to have to do that but I, I got really tired of it being my word against theirs and I'm just a dumb pothead right so who's gonna take my word so I got it on film and I put it out there for the world to see. And I got the opinions of pharmacists. Fired my doctor. My social worker fired himself. I got opinions, professional opinions of the yin yang big people. From pharmacists to uh, physicians assistants secretaries, you know, medical secretaries, uh, everyone, you name it, even police officers, all in 100% agreement with what I'm doing, secretly. You know, if Joan of Arc hadn't made a fuss the way she did, who knows how things would be in Europe right now for women. This is no different. Someone has to put their neck on the chopping block to prove a point. I fortunately had nothing to lose. Everything that I have, all of my physical possessions, easy come, easy go people, what you see that I have now is nothing compared to the things that I've lost in the past as a result of my 
trying to take care of myself the way I knew I had to take care of myself. But wasn't socially acceptable. What I finally ended up doing, people, is going to the emergency room every time I had any problem whatsoever. You see, I'm 100% disabled. Maine state law says that since I am 100% disabled, I am to be provided with a PCP, that is a primary care provider, who is willing to take care of me according to my needs and is located no more than 30 miles from my home location. For the past three years, the whole state of Maine has had only one doctor taking care of people the way I need to be taken care of, and he's located more than 300 miles away from me. A trip to see him and back and get everything that I need from that doctor will cost me almost a grand. Money I don't have, won't have, can't get. It's not me that needs to change that. It is the state of Maine. It is the insurance companies, the doctors, the pharmacists. They're the ones that need to change that shit, okay? So since I fired my doctor and I no longer had a PCP, primary care provider, every time I had anything go wrong, I went to the emergency room at $3,000 a pop plus whatever services they gave me there my insurance company after the fifth visit called me begging me to stop going to the emergency room begging me please get a primary care doctor and I told him flat out I have been trying I have been trying like a madman to find a doctor within 30 miles of me that will take care of me according to my needs as per main state law I have been unsuccessful three and a half years I've tried to find this doctor unsuccessfully and I said until you provide me with that doctor as per main state law you will pay three grand a pop for me to go to the emergency room if I have a bloody nose. It's going to cost you three grand for a doctor to shove a cotton wad up my nose. And if you feel like dropping me from your insurance because of this, be my guest. I am 100% disabled. You drop me and see what happens to you next. Well, people, they finally got off their asses and did the right thing. They've provided me finally with a doctor's appointment with a doctor who lives not even 10 miles from me who is going to take care of me the way I need to be taken care of. Now, why this doctor was impossible for me to find on my own, I don't know. I tried, I tried and tried and tried, but I could not find this doctor on my own. I had to force my insurance company to find this doctor for me. And that's what I suggest you do too. Stop being cattle. These people work for you, not the other way around. They take your money, you don't take theirs. You are the boss. A doctor is nothing more than a consultant. You don't have to take his drugs. You don't have to take his advice. If you don't like his advice and his drugs, you can fire that doctor and go hire another one. And if you can't find the doctor that you like, make your insurance company find him. The law says they have to. I can't tell you how many people in northern Maine here have been suckered into having to spend over a grand to go all the way down to Winslow to see this one doctor 
that's taking care of people like me the way we need to be taken care of. Suckered into doing this. Spending all this money ridiculously. Not me. I don't have it. I have to take care of myself. I will take care of myself the way I need to take care of myself. And if you don't like the medicine that I need to take care of myself with, then don't look at it. It's my medicine. Marijuana. Let's get that straight. Pot. It's no more of a drug than alcohol, cigarettes, and it's a lot less of a drug than your narcotic painkillers, your opiates. It's nothing compared to cocaine and heroin and shit like that. People, marijuana is a God-made medicine. A real medicine and it's in my opinion that some people need that medicine possibly even from birth I know I started using it when I was five years old and I had no idea what it was or that it was wrong or anything like that I just knew that when I used it I felt better I felt happy I felt normal like uh, and fun and happy and all my life people have been telling me no you can't do that no you're not supposed to do that that's evil that's demon weed people lies 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 and why money Money, people. That's it. Money. Doctors don't care about you. It's very rare to find a doctor that actually cares about you. He didn't go to medic school because he wants to take care of people. He went there because doctors make a lot of money. And how do they make their money? Well, most of them, especially the ones that label themselves doctors of internal medicine, make their money by writing you prescriptions. Now whether you need the prescription they write you or not doesn't matter. Who's to say? They're the doctor, right? Who's going to argue with a doctor? Me. That's who. I'm going to argue with a doctor. Because I don't care what school you went to. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what kind of life you've lived. You are no better person than I am. You're no more important to this world than I am. I have a purpose here, and I have a right to enjoy being here just as much as you do. Me, I don't need money to do that. People, I've been living on pennies for the last 17 years. And look at the things that I still have around me. It's all in how you live, people. It's all in, in the things you decide to do for yourself. And the one and most important thing that you can do for yourself is take care of yourself. And don't listen listen to me listen to me now don't take your doctor's word for it okay yes go see your doctor consult your doctor but don't take his word for it you see that thing right there that computer that's how I found out the truth I researched it. It took me a long time because they don't make it easy for you to find. It literally took me years to find the truth. But I found it because it is there. Even though it's very hard to find, it is there. You can find it if you look for it. And don't just take the first thing you see as being the truth. 
dig in to what you see. Find out who's saying it. Why are they saying it? What do they have to gain by saying it? And compare their answers to someone else's that differs and find out where they're coming from too. Don't ever cut yourself short and don't ever listen to the lies. Doctor wants to give you ibuprofen? Ask him why he's not giving you marijuana instead. I'm serious, people. They gave me ibuprofen for years and years and years until now my body has rejected it. Plain and simple, I can't. I'm, I'm allergic to all forms of aspirin. All aspirin products. I can't take none of them. Tylenol? Well, the years that they had me addicted to their opiate painkillers messed up my liver along with the fact that I was being stupid and drinking at the same time. Well, not at the same time I was taking them, but, you know, I was taking them or I was drinking or I was taking them or I was drinking. And the only reason I was drinking and taking those is because those painkillers weren't working for me and the alcohol wasn't working for me either. And the pot that I needed was impossible to find. Oh, huh, I could get you as much cocaine as you want. Alcohol, almost any kind of drug you want. But marijuana? The safest of them all. The one that has never killed a single person. I had an officer tell me the other day, he says, you know, I can point out a few officers that have lost their lives because of marijuana. And I said, that's only because they're out there, out there trying to defend something that should not be illegal. All we got to do is change the law so that it's not illegal anymore. And those people wouldn't have to be out there putting their lives on the line to defend it. Now, would they? And the illegal drug trades that, that it supports would die. But that's too easy, see, that's, that's too right. They don't want to do that because, well, the main reason they don't want to do that is because they lose a lot of revenue from it, okay? The only way they can make money off of marijuana is by making it illegal. It's the only way. And that's sad. That's really sad. Because all of my life, and all of the lives of many millions of people before me have suffered, 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 suffered. Because somebody else wanted and makes money. Well, like I say, this is my second to last entry. The show is almost over. My battles for the use of medical marijuana have almost come to an end. I don't have the card yet to show you, but I do have a doctor who's going to give me the right to take care of myself. <laughs> As if I wasn't born with that, you know? Um, listen, as soon as I have that card, I will make the last entry to this playlist, this show, my battles for the use of medical marijuana. My last entry will be a show that I have finally obtained the right to take care of myself. It ain't been easy. It has not been easy. But it has been worth it. And next year, this time, I ain't even going to think on any of this stuff. I'll have better things to do. I just hope that everyone who sees this 
understands that you too have the right to take care of yourself. It's the people with all the money that are denying you that right. Well, I see this doctor the 17th of next month, July 17th. As soon as I see him and I have my card or I have the whatever it is that he's going to give me that says I have the right to take care of myself, I'll make my last entry. But before I close this entry, I just wanted to let you know something funny that happened last week. Not so funny, but funny at the same time. Neighbor downstairs in the same building. Guy is young, healthy, strong, ain't a thing wrong with him. Living on the state. His only excuse for that was that he's got an attitude problem. He can't work with other people. Well, I got a problem with that because according to this guy, anyone who serves the military is retarded, okay, so that's out of the question for him. Uh, he has an excuse for every suggestion you make as to what kind of job he could get. No. Nope. Can't do that because of this, can't do that because of that. His big, biggest excuse is that, you know, he's a redhead, so he's got a sun allergy, right? <laughs> so get an inside job, right? Well, he's sitting here last week, and, and he knew that I had some medicine, some marijuana. He knew that I had some. And he decided he was going to sit here in my chair all day and smoke up my medicine. And at the same time, bitch cry and complain to me about how sucky his life is. Well, I ended that abruptly. Very abruptly. Okay? I knew what he was after, what he was wanting. I, I, I just, he drips of it. Okay? And I told him, get out. Leave. And don't come back. And he wouldn't. He sat right there. Like I was in his house and not the other way around. Three times. Three times I asked him politely to leave. And he just sat there. Ignoring me with a smile on his face. Waiting for me to spark up another bowl of marijuana. <laughs> I got pissed. I got really pissed because he just kept kept on and kept on and kept on about how, you know, piss moaning, piss moaning, piss moaning. So I told him exactly what I saw sitting in my chair. Okay? A young, healthy young man that's decided not to do anything to help himself. He's just going to sit there and cry and complain and bitch and moan and expect that, er that everyone owes him a life for what? For being born or something I mean I don't know but he didn't like that and he insulted me now I'd already asked him three times to leave my house and I figured if he was gonna sit there and expect me to listen to him cry moan bitch and complain about how fucked up his life is then the least he could do is sit there and listen to me tell tell him why his life is so fucked up He didn't like that. You know, of course, the truth hurts. So, he insulted me. Told me I had a big mouth. Because I, I kept telling him, man, you know, you're being lazy. You need to go to work. The best way to be a man for your family, your, your out-of-wedlock girlfriend, your out-of-wedlock baby, and, and this whole mess you've got going on downstairs is to be a man and go to work. Earn a paycheck. Something he confessed to me he has never done.
Well, when he insulted me, that was a mistake because I was in the middle of planting some cucumbers and I had these moss pots there, the little tiny cube moss pots, and I had a knife sitting next to me that I was going to use to separate those moss pots with, right? Well, when he insulted me, by this point I was already pissed off and I just wanted him to leave because I, I needed to medicate. He had, he had raised my anxiety to the point where I just, I needed to medicate and I was not going to medicate with him here because then he would expect some as well. He would just sit there and smoke up my medicine. Well, what the hell is that, right? Well, I took that knife and I stood up and I told him, get the fuck out of my house now. Oh, he put a shitty grin on his face and he stood up and smirked and said, oh, you're a freaking coward. Look at you with a knife in your hand. I just, I just told him, fuck out. This is a long knife, okay? Long fillet knife, all right? Very sharp. You can shave with that bitch, all right? And he knows it because I showed him you could shave with that. This was before. But he knew that I had a way to stop him from hurting me if he, w if he decided to hurt me and decided not to do what I was telling him to do, which was get out of my house. So he left. He called me a coward and he left. Okay. Well, then he calls the landlord of the building, the owner of this building, and he tries to get the landlord, I don't know, pissed off at me or whatever, and tells him what's going on. Well, the landlord already knew what I'm doing as far as medical marijuana goes. He already knew that. It's no surprise. Okay. Now, the thing about the knife threatening him with the knife, he didn't tell him why. He just told him that I'd, I'd threatened him with a knife. All right. So... Of course, the doc calls me up, he asks me what's going on, and hey, more than happy, I sit here and tell him what's going on, right? And I'm not mad, the guy's gone, no hard feelings, it's over with, right? Fine. The landlord says, hey, look, everything's okay, then uh, just, you know, chill out, should be no problem. And I agreed, yeah, no problem. He stays downstairs, I stay upstairs, and... We have our own lives to live, and there's no problem there, right? Well, as soon as Aaron, Aaron and Tasha, the, pe the, the scumbags of society, I'll just put it that way, okay? Society, social scumbags, living off your dollar and loving it, okay? Um, they decide that, well... We can't get him in trouble with, with the landlord, so let's call the police. Great. The police come. Now, as I said from the beginning, I'm going to take care of myself. Okay? And I have been. I have a grow room set up, and I had some nice plants growing there. I had six nice low riders and two god buds. Some of the best medical marijuana on the planet, just enough to take care of myself. Well, please show up. And of course, I don't have the right to do this yet, you know, because waiting for a doctor to give me that right. <laughs> anyway, the police come in, and fortunately, the police that, that came in uh, are very familiar with my plight what I'm going through and they were not happy at the fact that my neighbor had decided to use law enforcement as a tool of revenge against me for refusing one to smoke up my medicine with him and ordering him out of my house the way I did so they're gonna call the police and get revenge on me right well the police aren't stupid Okay, they realized what was going on here. They did not take my grow materials. They did not touch anything of my growing materials. But because the call was made and I don't have the legal right to be doing it, they had to take my plants. However, they did leave me one right in the middle of my table so it couldn't be missed. Which was cool. You know, it's kind of a statement saying, um, we know. We understand, you know. Anyway, they took my plants, 
and they charged me with misdemeanor cultivation of marijuana and misdemeanor reckless conduct because I forced him out of my house with a at knife point, you know. Um, <laughs> both of these charges, even the officers told me, are a wash. They're a wash. I'm going to go to court, and most likely the DA is going to drop them both. So, then he turns around and tells me, says, Mark, one, be careful who you let into your place. We know that you're going to take care of yourself, and we're not going to bother with you doing it. But be careful with who you let in here, because this kind of thing can happen. And I'm not stupid, I knew that. But I never expected this guy to be that way, you know. You don't know somebody until you know and then he tells me, you are not the one who's in trouble here. He says, you see, when he called us to use us as a tool of revenge against you, he opened the door for us to look at him too. And it turns out that he has been breaking federal law, him and his girlfriend, have been breaking federal law by living together in an apartment downstairs with a ghost apartment upstairs all winter long. They had no legal right to be living together, but yet they were. And with two separate households pulling in state and federal funds, to support them. The officer told me, don't worry Mark, you're not the one in trouble here. He is. I didn't mean him any harm. I'm not the one that called the police. But you see what how it goes people. You see how it is? Even the police understand the truth behind this. I really wish they hadn't taken my plans. I was only about a month away from being able to take care of myself 100%. You know. So until the next time, until I have that card that says I have the right to take care of myself, that's all for now, people. Peace out.